What up, what up, what up, what up, people? It's your boy Marv Lack, and this is another edition of Nerds in the Hood. Back again, y'all, doing our thing here in the crib. Um, we got to talk, y'all. Um, this time, we're not reviewing a movie, but we are reviewing something that was very special to me that I saw uh, this past week, and that was the new Amazon Prom video series known as Batman. The Caped Crusader. Now, this movie, I mean, excuse me, this TV series in its first season is supposed to be the spiritual successor to the original Batman anime series that aired in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, they did their thing a lot with Batman animated series, The Avengers of Batman and Robin, even Batman's time in the Justice League, and so on and so forth. This is not Kevin Conroy voicing it, unfortunately. Uh, Kevin Conroy is gone. He passed away, and we miss him dearly because he was the greatest person to voice Batman. Might have been one of the greatest people to portray Pat Batman altogether. But he was definitely one of the best people to voice Batman, in my personal opinion. Um, Diedrich Bader uh, also did a good job. Uh, or Baker, Diedrich Bader. Anyway, uh, he also did a good job. But uh, anyway, this show came on Amazon about a couple weeks ago now. Has about 10 episodes. Pretty short form. Just like your standard half an hour that you saw in the back in the, the day. But because of streaming services, you can get a little more running time because of the fact that they don't do commercials as much, especially if you're not paying for them. So outside of Amazon deciding to give you one quick commercial because they're Amazon for some reason, um, this one didn't really go that much. Amazon, at least their commercials like 30 seconds. But anyway, um, Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what we saw in these 10 episodes. But before we do, make sure you like, you share, you subscribe to Nerds in the Hood. Okay? Hit the description below. You see our link tree in the description. It will show you all of our social media that you can subscribe to. Check out all of our content and previews for upcoming episodes that we'll do in the future. As well as clips to episodes you might not even have seen yet. Um, so make sure you check that out. You know what I mean? Uh, we got so much more. And comment. You know, if you if you like this this show, if you didn't like this show, just hit us up. Hit us up in the DMs. Hit us up in the comment section. Write about it. Anyway. Oh, I was right. DJ Bader. So, uh, the Batman himself, Bruce Wayne, was played by a gentleman named Hamish Linklater. Now, a lot of us might not know him, but he's been in a lot of different things here and there, like Battleship and the New Adventures of Old Christine. He was Cypher in Gen V. So if anybody remembers that, he was in that too. So he's, he's been in his bit of things. He's done a Marvel series before too. So um, that one was uh, Marvel's Wastelanders, if you know about it. But anyway, um, I, I actually like this show. Long story short. It was basically, it was more like, in this case, Batman Year One. If you remember, there was a movie years ago called Batman Year One. It was a comic book series. It was about Batman's first year being Batman and people getting used to him and knowing him. We've seen this story done numerous times, you know, whether it was Batman Begins or, well, yeah, Batman Begins or The Batman. Like, we've seen this story play out so many times. So it's cool to see it again in an animated form. And Batman animated series kind of took advantage of that, but not so much because you already knew who he was. They even pay a little homage to the Batman anime series opening where he stands and there's lightning in the background and you just see him. Um, but what this one did was just focus on the fact that this was a rookie Batman in his rookie season. You know what I mean? Be becoming the legend that Gotham knows. Becoming the hero that Gotham respects. Becoming the terror that villains fear. He was becoming that in this series. Um, the craziest thing though is even if you didn't like it, one of the reasons most people didn't like it was because of the, 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 the subtle changes that it chose to make. Even though it wasn't that subtle, but it, you know what I mean. It was changes that they felt were probably avoidable or unnecessary. Like um, the penguin being a woman. Or the fact that Harley Quinn was Asian and she was bisexual. And it's like, so? A lot of people complain about being bisexual, but they forget that Kaylee Cuoco 
voices a Harley Quinn who is also bisexual, and that show is on Max and is also a good show, and I don't think anybody really cares if she's in a relationship with Poison Ivy on that show. And in this show, she was going out with Detective Montoya, and they was about to hook up, but because she was a bad guy and Batman almost caught her, she had to boogie. So we'll see her again, but I, fam, I was cool with that. It was actually pretty cool because she was a psychiatrist first. She was trying to analyze Bruce Wayne. She analyzed it enough where she kind of understood, but she didn't really have a strong feeling he was Batman, but she understood about him. And then she was pretty much right. So that was cool to me. Um, some, of the, some of the villains we saw was Penguin. Some of the villains we saw, uh, it was Penguin, Harley Quinn, and Harvey Dent. So Harvey Dent was, to me, one of my favorite characters because you got to see the whole progression of him becoming Harvey Dent. Him try, him being a crooked politician, then eventually being a politician that was like, we need to care about the people, but it was too late. And what made it funny was the story that they chose, the way they chose to tell how he became Two-Face in this one was he decided to stop taking crooked money from the mob. Um, he was a defense attorney, not a politician, excuse me. He decided to stop taking crooked money from the mob. He was running to be a politician. He was running for mayor. And he was trying to win, even though they was like, yo, fam, you, you about to catch this L. I don't know what you seeing, but I know what we seeing. So he was about to catch the L. Katz was just like, nah, he good. They wanted him to turn down a case to let one of their peoples kind of go free. He said, nah, y'all good. And right after the case finishes, my man goes to the bathroom solo dolo. A goon for the mob was sitting in the back like game time comes through with a, a freaking <laughs> flask of acid and was like, yo, the boss, the boss said this for you, whole at. Threw it on one side of Dent's face, messing up his whole side. It don't matter if it happened in the comics or not. I just thought it was mad funny. My son just said, whole lot acid bounced. And then Dent came back for his revenge later. But it was too funny for me. This show has some moments where I was just like, this is what I miss about the old days of Batman and Superman. Because Batman and Superman had moments where you were like, yo, this show is wildin'. Like, we all remember when Batman and Superman crossed over for the first time on Kids WB and the world went crazy. It was like, yo, this is, this is epic right here. And most of the time, it was just Batman trolling Superman, showing that, yo, if I wanted to, I could take your girl anytime. It's nothing. To the point where my man was tagging Bat Superman's phone doing all types of stuff and just bothering this man in the middle of the night and even had his girl on him jocking him like yo this bruce wayne dude's kind of cool he's like word <laughs> so it's just like but it was crazy stuff like that and in this one he didn't really get too much of that crazy stuff it was there but we have more crazy batman stuff remember in the animated series he made kids play chicken on a train and waited till the kids almost died before he saved them. It was like, yo, play chicken again. You're going to catch an L, homie. And I'm not saving you. So it was just like, what? So I know it wasn't the quote. The quote was more like, play with chicken and you'll get burned or something like that. But in this Batman series, first off, first off, he was chasing goons. And I think goons almost killed or, or got at either Commissioner Gordon or some character. My man swerves the Batmobile on some Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift stuff and hits all of them light work and then just drives off. I was like, wait, when did Batman do this? This is crazy. But I'm going to let y'all know my favorite moment before, before we, we, we wrap up this review song. My favorite moment that made me laugh so much was there was, it was episode seven, if I'm right. And he was at a, it was either seven or eight. And he's at a carnival, right? And he's at a carnival doing Bruce Wayne things, chilling, whatever. Uh, he helps, little kids start going missing because this one woman is sucking their energy and becoming stronger from it, which is crazy, right? My man's goes looking for the kids as Bruce Wayne though, because it was like in the middle of the whole carnival, mad people was there. He couldn't just change into Batman. So he went looking for people as Bruce Wayne, he went looking for these kids. He's looking for the kids. He runs into some carnies, some carnival folk, like a bearded lady and all types of stuff like that. He runs into them, starts pressing them for questions like, yo, you know where the kids is at? They're like, yo, what you doing back here, bro? And he's like, yo, I'm just trying to find this kid. They're like, nah, 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 you're not even supposed to be back here. So now he looks at them like, 
So what's up then? They was like, what? Nick, what? And they jump him. They literally jump this man and throw him in a ditch after they tie him up. It was crazy. And then on top of that, I know Bruce Wayne was sick because he was like, yo, fam, if I was Batman, I would have washed all of them. But I think when he's Bruce Wayne, he has to show that he can't fight. So he has to just take the L. But he did he take this L? Oh, my Lord. These carnies beat the brakes off of this man and threw him in a ditch. Throwing him in a ditch was the part that made me laugh the hardest. I understand they was jumping him because they were just trying to be like, yo, you on our turf, bro. Get out of here. But to throw him in a ditch was like, what was the point of throwing him in a ditch? I don't understand the point of throwing my man in the ditch. It was just like, yo, I think we trying to send a message or something. I don't know. Anyway. But overall, the show was good. And of course, we got our Joker sighting. But they, they at least, what I love the most is that they didn't just go right off the gate with the Joker. They wanted you to catch all the other villains first in his first year as Batman. Because Batman Begins did the same thing. First villain was um was um Raja, Raja Gu. First villain, right? And then second movie was Joker. So they wanted you to kind of like focus on like Batman going through the ups and the downs. He was failing missions. He was losing people. Things was happening. He beat up the Penguin and then the Penguin still was firing off a missile that she wanted to fire off. And he realized like, yo, I failed my mission. He was treating Alfred like like crap for no reason. Like he was treating Alfred crazy. He was yelling at him a couple times. Like just different things. Alfred was still saving his life. Still doing stuff. He took a he took a spirit to the face and let the spirit absorb him and still was like, yo, you my man's though. Because of the oath that he gave to his parents years ago. Like, yo, I'm gonna look out for little man. Don't worry, man. He he basically gonna be my son. You feel me? Y'all just leave me the bread and we'd be all right. So it was a lot of it was a lot of dope stuff. It uh, obviously is not gonna be what we wanted it to be in terms of the animated series. The animated series did something that we never expected. And that's what made it good television. This, I think we came with an expectation that it was either going to be like the animated series or better. Um, some people probably came with an with a, with a anticipation that wasn't. And all of that is fine because you don't know until it actually comes on the screen. I trusted it because three people was behind it, which was Bruce Timm, a guy who had a hand in the original Batman the Animated Series. Matt Reeves, who had a hand in the Batman movie that was pretty good with Robert Patterson. And J.J. Abrams. Well, he doesn't have really anything to do with Batman, but Lost and some of the recent Star Wars movies. They weren't that good, but hey, he, he, knew, what they, he, knew, what, he knew what he was doing. You know what I mean? Lost was cool. just ended kind of weird, but whatever. So these three minds came together and gave a show that couldn't really live up to the standard in that sense of the uh, anime series from the 90s, but it still did good work. Enough that a season two... They could work on being better. And if they're just going to focus on mainly the Joker, then that's cool. That's cool. But again, one last thing I'm going to say. All you people that are focusing on the Penguin being a woman or Harley Quinn being a, not white or being gay, who cares? As long as it's entertaining, I do not care. I don't care how they recast it, what color they choose to recast it, what gender they choose to recast it. As long as it was good. Penguin as a woman was probably a little bit better than Penguin as a man because she still was able to beat Batman at what she wanted to do. The Penguin as a dude always be going through something. And then you got to hear him go, wank, 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 wank. She ain't had to do that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, she had more dignified. She was like, I ain't going to sit here and make Penguin sounds. You crazy? I'm just going to be the Penguin, man. But it was cool that way. It was a lot of things that was cool. Commissioner Gordon was black. His daughter was black. So we might get a black Batgirl. Like all of that is fine. Just let the show be. Let it be cool. If it's cool, it's cool. If you don't like it, turn it off. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. If you don't like it, deal with it. Turn it off. Don't watch it. It's all right. Other people will watch it. As far as I'm concerned, this show is going to get... I'm, I'm going to say it's all right. It, it's, not, it's not fire fire because it was moments where I was like, eh. But it is pretty good. It has the potential to be valid, but I'm going to put it right in the middle. It's all right. Remember our rating system. Valid means this show is fire. It's all right means it's all right. And it's ain't it, which means it's trash. But this is not trash. This is pretty good. I think it's cool. Um, again, this like I keep saying to y'all, this is a superhero summer. This is a superhero year. And it's only going up from here. 
Um, so we're going to wrap it up here. Go check out Batman K Crusader. It's on Amazon Prime right now. Ten episodes real quick. None of them are hours. You could bang those out in a day or two. Um, and come back for more of these nerds in the hood goodness. Again, link tree is in the description below. Check it out. Follow us on all social media. And we'll catch you next time on another episode of Nerds in the Hood. Peace.